Okay. Oh, yes. Hey. Hi, everyone. This is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo. And with me today is Sherry. Hi, everybody. Can you introduce yourself and the activities? Okay. Um, I'm Sherry Spielitz, and I am at home in Vienna, Austria. And it's a lovely Sunday morning. And um, yes, I teach elementary physical education at an international school here. And uh, I'm excited to share this activity. So this activity is called a structured dialogue, and, or also a dyad is the other term. And it works this way. It's between two people. And essentially, one person delivers a prompt, which is a statement. A re, it's not a question. So, um, and then the other person responds. And there's no crosstalk. So the person responds and the other person is just listening. And when the person has finished their response, the person who delivered the prompt simply says, thank you, and then delivers the next prompt. So the, I, we have four prompts and it goes, we go through all of the prompts in one direction and then we switch, we switch roles and ideally, when you respond, you want to take the first thing that comes to mind. So don't think too hard. Don't, don't stress like, oh, I got to find the right, just take whatever's there. And also try to keep your response uh, relatively concise. It doesn't have to be super short, but try to keep it contained, I suppose is the word, um, because we're going to repeat the process. So we'll, with the very same prompts, same process, and uh, each time the response to someone else's response is always only thank you. So that's the, the uh, structure of dialogue. So now I'm going to share my screen. And so which way would you like to go first, Maha? Would you like to deliver mm -hmm. the prompts or would you like to receive the prompts? Uh, let me deliver the prompts. Okay. All right. So, Sherry, tell me something you find encouraging. Okay. Something I find encouraging right now is um, I am back at school. So we're back to um, regular school with masks and with um, lots of hand sanitizer, lots of hand washing. And I'm encouraged because it seems to be working um, that I recognize how happy we are as a community to be together and to have the privilege of actually being together in the building. Um, and so I find it encouraging that, it's that, that it seems to be working and I feel relatively safe and, and able to actually work well with kids and with, with my colleagues. Thank you. Tell me something that makes you curious. Hmm, something, something that makes me curious. Hmm. I um, was listening to uh, a podcast last night called Nice White Parents, and it's about um, public city families, uh, public, public city, public school families in New York City. There we go. Um, and it's about one particular school and um, about the history of, of white parents and, and parents of color and how they uh, support or don't support a, a particular school. And the thing that makes me curious is as I'm listening and I'm, under, and I'm understanding these patterns of behavior, particularly among, among the nice white parents, is how, how I'm just wonder, I'm wondering about the viewpoints that that lead them to the behaviors that they are showing, which for me strike me as kind of colonialist and somewhat paternalistic, and um, and and how that pattern of of constantly sort of arriving at those behaviors, even if they have an awareness of of racist behavior and not and wanting to avoid those. So that's something that makes me curious and makes me want to listen more because I've only listened to two episodes. There are three more to go. Thank you. 
Tell me a concern you have. A concern I have is, um, thinking going back to, to my school situation, is the contingency of our being together. So I, I worry and wonder uh, how long we will be able to have this uh, situation where we're all on campus, every, all the levels, so all divisions, all the kids, all the faculty. Um, so that's a concern I have. Um, and I, I'm just hopeful that we can all stay safe, but I realize that there are no guarantees. So my concern is how long and how do we maintain the community even if we have to somehow divide or um, perhaps shift in one way or another? Tell me something that makes you smile. Something that makes me smile is being able to have this conversation this morning. Um, I'm happy to, to see you and to be with you. And um, so that's something that really makes me smile. Thank you, Sherry. So now we switch? Yes, now we switch. All right. Baha, tell me something you find encouraging. One thing that I have found encouraging um, in the past couple of months um, is the ways in which uh, the work I've been doing towards equity and social justice uh, for so many years now is sort of becoming recognized and supported in ways that it has never been before. Um, so that, that's really encouraging for me to feel like, yeah, this hasn't gone in vain. You know, it's one of those things you give it to labor of love and you keep on going even when nobody's listening or when very few people are listening. Um, but then it's great to be able to, to find that work like sort of bear fruit right now. Thank you. Tell me something that makes you curious. Oh gosh, I'm curious about a lot of things and having a young child makes you realize that you're still not curious enough. Um, something that makes me curious. I'll just say a quick one. Um, these community building activities that we're working on, I'm curious. Now that I have even more in my repertoire than I normally do because I'm curating from other people, I'm curious how my students will receive them. Um, and I was speaking to Kate Bowles who wrote our safety considerations section for the website. Um, I'm, I'm curious uh, if they will be willing to share with me if some of these activities are uh, not safe or not enjoyable for them. Uh, and I'm curious about how I might go about um, encouraging them to share that feedback in ways that don't feel threatening to them. So maybe anonymous feedback or, or group feedback where they just report back to me a summary or something like that. So that's something I'm curious about right now. Thank you. Tell me a concern you have. I have this multifaceted concern about going back to school. I am concerned about going face to face in case it's not safe, but I'm also concerned about going online in case the teachers and students, especially in younger ages, can't handle it, or definitely for people um, who have um, infrastructure uh, problems, if the government is not gonna support them with infrastructure, then I'm concerned about what kind of education they're gonna be having for the coming year. So it's, it's a very difficult, I think, situation of safety, uh, where, where the risks are unclear, especially for young people we were just talking about. We're not sure if lower, younger people are less risk, but then the teachers are not young people, the teachers are adults, right? Um, and, and the young people may pass things on. We don't know. So if, I wish we knew more. So I'm concerned about the uncertainty about the safety versus the pedagogical possibilities. Thank you. Tell me something that makes you smile. What makes me smile is a conversation like this one with a friend like you and all of the ones that I'm doing, honestly, with people that I either uh, love to be with or, or I'm, I'm wanting to get to know. So this kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. That was a really interesting experience. Can I, can I reflect okay. on it a little bit no not yet not yet not yet okay what happens next <laughs> because we go through it again we go through it again yes oh 
Okay, we, I didn't realize uh, that. Okay. Do we do we respond in the next time, round or what do we like? What do we do uh, in the next round? See what happens. So this is the this okay. is I would say the interesting part about about structured dialogues. Okay. Oh, okay. how did I miss that for? Okay, so I'm going to ask you again, right? Tell me something you find encouraging. Um, I am encouraged by. Um, actually, I'm, I'm thinking also a little bit about what you said um, about having my work recognized um, that I've work that I've been engaging in in a long time and perhaps um, more so that that's happening in my own institution. Um, more so than in the past and that is um, that that is encouraging and, and it makes me feel that um, that maybe we are ready to take some different steps than than in the past. Um, so I'm that that is something that's encouraging to to sort of al almost suddenly um, have more people sort of recognize oh oh we we have to think about racism too oh okay and let's we have to think about equity what does that mean in our context where where so many of us are so very privileged um, what does equity look like in that context um, so that's something I find really encouraging. Thank you. Cherry, tell me something that makes you curious. Um, something, something that makes me curious is um, getting older makes me curious. Um, in, in some ways, um, I, passed the, I passed the 50 mark a while ago. And um, what makes me curious is like, in some ways, I feel like I'm living my best life, that there are so many things that are happening, happening for me now in my 50s that I think, whoa, what, could what more could there possibly be? Um, and so I'm curious about what's ahead. Um, and given, given the fact that the world is on fire, it's a very strange and bizarre thing almost to have reason and cause to look forward to something, to be somehow in some way optimistic. Um, and still I am. I'm curious about the future, about my own future and, and um, what I can do and will do to mitigate the, the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Thank you. Sherry, tell me a concern you have. A concern I have is that the world is on fire. Really, literally, in, in, on so many levels. And, and so that's not one concern, that's, that's multiple concerns that go very deep and that are also just right in front of me. Um, so my concern, the concern that I have maybe is how do I stay engaged in a purposeful way that's not just hand-wringing and lamenting but that actually ha that that where I also show some agency and and look to to change what's within my uh, control. Um, so a concern I have is is how do, how are we gonna how are we gonna make it through this and how how am I in my little sphere uh, going to to do to be effective in whatever it is whatever kind of change I'm trying to affect. Thank you, Sherry. Tell me something that makes me smile. Something that makes me smile um, is my uh, my twelve year old son, who has a remarkable sense of humor, and uh, who surprises me again and again with his his ability to to crack me up and to deliver a line that I just didn't see coming. And and um, I just love that. I love the surprise. I love the surprise of him. So oh, I was muted. I was saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So we get to go the second round for you. Maha, please tell me something you find encouraging. So I'm going to go with what you said as well, because when I was talking about my work being recognized, uh, I was in that moment talking about more internationally, but actually it's 
it's also been more recognized in my institution, which has been also very gratifying uh, because a lot of us have our work recognized internationally and on social media or whatever more than it is recognized locally. And then it feels like such a waste that you have so much you want to give. And so finally it's being listened to. So that's also encouraging. Thank you. Tell me something that makes you curious. So I'm actually curious about the podcast that you shared about, White Parents. Uh, I think I came across it somewhere, like someone's mentioning it. Um, and as you were talking about it, I wanted to stop you and ask you about it, but I couldn't because I can't do that. I can only say thank you. Um, and so I, I'm curious about that one. So I'll ask you about it later and uh, try to get the, the name of the podcast so I can follow through. You said there were only three episodes, but so I'm guessing it wasn't just one episode about this topic, but it's an entire podcast about that. So you can't answer me now, but I'll ask you later. Thank you. <laughs> um, Maha, please tell me a concern you have. Um, I, I want to build on the concern I said earlier. So the earlier concern was about decisions made during the mm -hmm. pandemic and health versus pedagogy and, and inequalities and that. And I think that's a concern I have in general beyond. I think it's just a representation of a larger problem in the world of how uh, one solution to any kind of problem really uh, can have adverse effects on some populations while advantaging another population. Uh, and obviously this is not a concern that's new. It's not like I, I discovered something, but I think with the pandemic, it makes it really glaring how that can be the case and how within, within a country or, or a, a school, you, you have that problem, but this is a problem with almost every decision that we make and who dominates, and whose, uh, whose concerns are made paramount and whose lives and livelihoods and happiness are prioritized and how that then influences everyone else. Thank you. Tell me something that makes you smile. I was going to say something else, but then the way you said thank you right then made me realize something. That in this exercise, you can only say thank you, but you can say thank you in so many ways. Because mm -hmm. I had my camera off for part of it, I couldn't necessarily do that. I guess I could do it with my tone of voice, but I smiled at the way you said thank you with your face to express a lot more than a polite thank you that I thought was what we were doing here. <laughs> So that was just a discovery for me, <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. So that was the structured dialogue. And um, it's, it's also, it's possible to do a third round. So if you have a longer period of time, it's possible to do a third round. Um, so, so Ma, what, what was it like for you? So um, first of all, even though you had showed me several demos of this before, it was different than experiencing it. So I mean, I encourage people who watch this to try it out with someone and see how it feels. Um, it was first at the beginning, it seemed hard not to respond while you were talking with anything but thank you. But then towards the end, when you did that, like you could still give a facial expression of listening and make your thank you meaningful. I thought that was really interesting. Um, but, but also I had to fight the urge to take notes of things that you were saying that I wanted to follow up on. And I think I shouldn't do that. Like I shouldn't be taking notes. It sh I should just focus on listening. Cause I feel like when you do that, you sort of distract and you start thinking of your response rather than listening to the person. Um, I, 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 for some reason I hadn't realized that we were doing two rounds, even though you said that I seem not to have fully absorbed that. So I wasn't listening very well back then. Um, and I didn't realize that the second round would be so useful too, because it also sort of allows you to respond to the other person, even though you're actually answering the same question about yourself again, but it sort of allows you to make sort of a connection there if you want to. And so I thought that was a nice uh, other way of doing it. And I think also, I think it also does something else which you did when you came and guest spoke in my class. I think it trains you to listen more carefully to when someone else is done talking because in these uh, video calls, people tend to interrupt each other because they don't realize who's done talking and who's not. And sometimes it's because of a lag in the technology. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it also, um, it also has, has that value. 
and also because you're asking questions four in a row and then listen and then speaking four in a row versus one and one on each question there's something about that that is unexpectedly useful like you would think it would make more sense that we each answer the same question and then we each answer the same question but there's something about even though the questions don't necessarily build on each other and i like that some of them are more towards being positive and more to find others towards addressing challenges so yeah well i i'm 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 glad that you found uh particularly the second round useful and and that it, that it was a different experience to to actually do it even having heard a couple of of uh examples i um I mean, this is a, an exercise that, that I learned originally in uh, coaching training, sort of personality seminars and, and actually, and I can, eat, I can so clearly remember the first time that I did this, uh, it was with an older gentleman, this is in Austria, and part of this setup of the seminar was that we were sent on a walk. So we, had, we actually had to transcribe the, the prompt, so we had them on a sheet of paper, and then we went on a walk. And this was a, a stranger to me. And we're walking and talking, and, and we've got the structure down. And, and I, almost, I almost can remember my responses. And, and what was strange for me at the time was how, how um, intimate my responses were with this complete stranger um, you know, by the second, the second round, third round, um, that, that I had absolutely no qualms about just saying what was on my mind, that I was really just, this is the answer that's there, boom. And, and then reflecting on it later and thinking, wow, wow. And I really said some things that were deeply, deeply meaningful. And I still think, man, and then some of those things actually came to pass. So I'm sort of like, Ooh. <laughs> so for me, this, these, these, exercises that that when I've done them again and again have always reminded me of that the power of of simply being present with someone else um, whether we know them or not we can be we can be very close to someone and still things are revealed in this kind in this structure that we may not have expected right that's true um, and would you uh would you, you would definitely pair them up sort of randomly, right? Like you wouldn't normally pair them up in a particular way or do you? I, you know, I think there are, are different ways to approach it depending on, on the aims and the scope of, of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, when I think about uh, using this in, in online learning, this is something I imagine for when, when students are already know each other a bit, mm -hmm. um, that it's not necessarily an introductory activity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I also think that, um, that you can, depending also the, the prompts that you develop can be broader or they can be much more narrow in scope. So it could really be, tell me something you find, uh, what do you find interesting about the syllabus or um, right. tell me something that surprised me. Yeah. It could be content-based. I was thinking when we talk about empathy and bias in my class, we could talk about, tell me a time where you felt like people didn't empathize with you. Tell me yeah. about a time where you might have uh, been biased against someone inevitably. Yeah, I can imagine. And I can imagine one of the things I was thinking about as we were talking about doing this is obviously in a class online, you could do breakout rooms, but that's tricky here because some people have problematic internet connections so in pairs if someone drops off it's a huge issue but you can actually assign students to do it in their own time and tell them to take half an hour to do it and whether or not they report on it is up to you i wouldn't ask them to report on the answers but they could maybe report on the experience yes so reflect on these so in but in your case you were asked to transcribe the answers like you recorded the well, audio and then no not the not the answers just just the prompts so oh, just the prompts, okay. The prompts, so we so that we had the prompts with us, uh, and I, it's it's interesting because I think a little bit about that process of actually of actively needing to write the prompts out mm -hmm. um, before embarking on the conversation. So I felt like that was a different way of priming us 
for the experience or just, or just internalizing the, the uh, prompts themselves uh, mm -hmm. a little bit better. Um, so that was just an, an extra step. I don't think that has to be, but just, I just remember that from my, my initial experiences um, with the, the exercise. That's very interesting. But now, now I'm seeing so many possibilities with this one. And I love how I can really imagine it just being done as an assignment asynchronously, or at least not synchronously with me. I, I think it would be, it could be done by students via text, but a bit harder. A bit, a bit harder because you may want to have a more complex response that it yeah. may take longer to, to text out. But um, I, um, I used this exercise. I encouraged my um, digital pedagogy lab um, folks this year to, to try to, to do at least one of these mm -hmm. and also to arrange themselves. So this, so part, I, I do think there is a lot of power in when you can select, when you can find your own partner, mm -hmm. um, when you can. And so I try to facilitate that by a Google doc and, the, you know, sort of saying these yeah. are the times we're in um, to help people find each other. Um, because I do think that one of the, one of the big questions for me in that context was, how can people bump into each other in this, in this setting? And, and that is something that, that um, in online context, we really need to, to think about what opportunities do we create for our students to uh, interact spontaneously, right? If we were in the room, we might look across and make eye contact and say, but wanna be partners, right? Just that, that signal or not. Yeah. Um, so, um, what are ways that we can enable um, independent contact of students with each other, um, our learners with each other? Well, and, and, and this agency, giving them agency of choosing their partner is also important because I was thinking that perhaps in my culture, it's possible that some girls would not like to be paired with a guy that they don't know. Um, and so giving that kind of agency, but then thinking about, well, but if she puts her name down, then a guy might drop into that slot. So I need to think a little bit more about um, how to sort of empower people to refuse mm. certain types of partnership without having to reject someone who just slotted themselves in. Uh, I'll have to think about this one a little bit. And, and Do you have any ideas? And that's well, what, the, here's, here's um, what I've been thinking about a lot lately and that I feel like I've been almost preaching um, is students as resources, right? Is, is asking them. So here, and, and just presenting the dilemma, right? Mm -hmm. So here's this idea I have, I'm not sure how it could work out, but I, ha I think it can work out, but um, think with me with, on this, mm -hmm. um, that they may have some great solutions and ideas that would never have occurred to us. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because all the ones I have in mind feel like they're, uh, they would be othering, like they would be showing something that maybe they want, but they don't want to tell other people they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. Let's see what they come up with. That's a great idea. All right. Do you have anything else to add, Sherry? I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm really excited to, to, to share this, this activity. I really, one of the things that I loved about preparing for DPL was having occasion to call up some friends and say, will you do a, di a structured dialogue with me? Because that's something that feels very, very special to spend that time listening with each other um, and just hearing the responses and, and thinking together. Um, so I'm, I'm super pleased that we got to do this. So thank you. Mark. Oh, me too. Thank you so much, Sherry. I'm going to turn off the recording now.